Welcome back to the complete overview of Pixel Text Deluxe. I'm the Carpenter Stacker, and let's quick start the game. This is part two, the tutorial. In this tutorial, the basic game will be covered. While the cards used in this video are from the deluxe set, you can still follow along even with any other Pixel Text Core set. All you need are two hero decks and a couple of tokens. Your goal in this game is to build up your unit and take down your rival's unit before they take down yours. A game mat is provided and it's optional to use it. A match of Pixel Tactics is played in several games, usually best out of three or five. Now let's get started. If a game mat is used, place it between players, short side facing the players of course. Now give each player a deck of hero cards. Please note that both decks are identical and have the same number of cards but have different backings. Both players now shuffles their deck and draws 5 cards. Then the players now decide which of the hero cards will become their leader and places it face down. When deciding, cards should be turned so the leader side is facing upright. Leaders are denoted by the red ribbon leader symbol located on the top of one of the card's sides. When both players are done choosing a leader, they reveal their leader and place it in the middle of the unit. After determining who goes first, give the first player and second player markers to their respective players and place the current wave marker on each player's vanguard area. Every hero card has several different features. On its leader side, each leader can be denoted by the red leader symbol above the character's sprite. The sword is its attack strength and the shield tells how many life points it has. Other texts may state abilities or actions. And there is an expansion symbol to tell you what set it's from. A card is a hero when a blue ribbon is on top. Just like the leader, it has a red sword and a blue shield to show its potential damage and life point total. Heroes are less powerful than leaders, but have different abilities and powers depending on their placement from their leader. If a hero is in the first row above the leader, they are vanguard heroes. They follow the actions and abilities found in the red section which usually is offensive or defensive. Green flank heroes are on the left and right of the leader and follow the green section. Their abilities can range from giving stat boosts to allies to tactical abilities. Rear heroes can have supporting abilities to range attacks. Their abilities are found in the blue sections. The fourth and last section can be one of three things. Ones that are purple are called orders. Orders are played as an action and go to a discard pile when they resolve. Operations are gray and are played as an action as well. They have an ongoing effects and are played in the reserve slot below the rear row. Usually they stay for about four turns. Traps, which are orange, play as an action, are placed in the reserve slot below face down. Traps have interrupting abilities and may be played as a free action to flip up when the time is relevant. The area where heroes and leaders are placed is called the unit. The unit is divided into three rows, vanguard, flank, and rear. Cards played behind the rear, usually traps and operations, is an area called the reserve. Each row contains three empty slots in exception with the flank row which only has two. You may only place a card if a slot is empty. Let's go into game flow. The game is played in several rounds which is divided into three turns called waves. Vanguard, Flank, and Rear. Markers help indicate the current state of the game. The first player takes the first player marker, and the second player takes the second player marker. Each player also takes a current wave marker. The round begins with the player with the first player marker and makes two actions in a wave. The player may select actions from a list of basic actions or may activate actions of their heroes or leader depending on the current wave. The first player does their two actions followed by the second player who does theirs. When a wave is completed, the game proceeds to the next wave. 
The first wave is called the Vanguard, where Vanguard heroes can attack or use any available actions. The second wave is called the Flank. Flank heroes and the leader may attack and do actions, and the same is done with the rear heroes in the rear wave. After the second player is done with their actions in the last wave, the player marker at the end of the rounds are exchanged. Play resumes with the player who has the first player marker, and the game returns back to the Vanguard wave. And while those are the basics, here are some more rules to observe. First, the very first round is in a ceasefire. This means that no attacks nor spells can be executed. Orders and operations cannot be used. A player cannot interfere or interact with a rival hand or unit. Traps can be placed, but they cannot be activated. A ceasefire only happens just in the very first round. Second, when a hero falls in battle, they flip and remain a corpse on the field if they lose life equal or more than the life total at the end of the wave. For example, when the first player manages to reduce their rival's hero or leader's life to equal or beyond their life total, the hero or leader does not fall at the end of the first player's current wave, but rather at the end of the second player's turn, the end of the current wave. At the end of each wave, both players check to see if any of their heroes or leaders have fallen. A player may have a chance to restore life points back to their heroes or even attack with them before the wave ends. Third, a corpse takes up a slot and new recruitment cannot be added in occupied slots. A player must take an action to remove that card to make room. Fourth, the hand size limit for a basic game is 5 and only relates to the drawing action. If you have reached the maximum number of cards, the draw action cannot be taken. However, you are still allowed to draw from hero and leader abilities. Fifth, leaders that are able to do their actions can still activate their actions regardless of wave. Lastly, Pixel Taxes is about defeating the rival's leader. Because of the special rules on casualties, more than one leader may fall. If this happens, then both players compare the number of remaining heroes in their units. The player with the most heroes left in their units wins the match. And if it's the same number, then it's considered a tie. Actions are the main way the players interact with each other. In a wave, players have two actions they can take. Players have a list of actions they can select or they can use an action of the hero or leader in their unit. Attacking is the main way to deal damage to your rival's unit. All heroes and leaders have the attacking action in which they deal damage based on the number listed on their sword icon. In order to attack, the attacker must be in its current wave. Both the attacker and the target in the rival's unit must be in melee. Heroes and leaders that are the foremost slot of each column of a unit are considered to be engaged in melee. If a hero or leader has range attack, it can attack any target in the rival's unit in any position. However, if a hero on the defending side has intercept, any hero or leader behind it in the same column is protected and cannot be a ranged target as long as the intercepting hero is alive. The move action moves any hero in the unit from its slot to an empty slot. A hero can use spells instead of attacking. Spell varies from hero to hero and can have some very powerful effects. For example, the lancer in the rear row has Spell, defeat a hero in melee with damage on it. To recruit a hero, take a hero card in hand and place it into an empty slot in the current wave. The four following actions, attack, move, cast a spell, and recruit a hero are exclusive actions meaning that each hero can only use these once in a wave. If a hero is recruited, then he cannot attack, move, or cast a spell on the same turn. Heroes or leaders can only attack once a turn, and heroes can never take more than one of these actions. However, certain abilities can succeed this rule, even if it triggers any of these actions again. The draw a card action simply makes you draw a card from the deck. A player cannot take this action if there isn't any cards left to draw, or if the player reaches the hand limit. In this game, if a deck is depleted, the discard pile does not get reshuffled. A switch involves having any two of a player's hero trade slots with each other. This is a long action so it will take up two of the player's actions. Some leaders may have an action a player can use. Some of these actions can be limited, free, or long. A limited action means it can only be taken once per wave. A free action means it does not cost you an action to use. And a long action means it takes up two actions to use. Leader actions can also be activated during any wave. 
Orders can be played during a wave and are not considered to be in your hand or discard pile when played. Once an order has carried its effect, it goes straight to the discard pile. When a hero has fallen, it is flipped and remains on its slot. It takes an action to remove a corpse, which is sent to the discard pile. If a hero in your hand has an operation ability, you can play it on an empty slot in your reserve row as an action. Operation stays in play for 4 turns and are then discarded. If a hero has a trap ability, as an action you may place it in an empty slot in your reserve row face down. When a specific condition is met on the trap, a player may activate it as a free action. Traps can be activated during a rival's turn, and a player can activate a trap as a response to a rival's trap. However, traps cannot be activated on the same turn they are placed. Because of limited space on your reserve, you may take this action to discard a trap or an operation that is occupying a slot. And you may pass, which ends your turn. Heroes may have actions and passive abilities on text which is accompanied by some iconography. A hero's ability can have multiple icons. While it's not necessary to understand, its purpose is to give you a visual summary of a hero's text. Let's briefly go through some of these common terms and effects on a few cards. The Reflector Vanguard ability reads, When this hero is damaged by an attack, apply the same amount to the attacker. The Brewmaster's Flank ability reads, Spell, remove up to 3 damage from another hero. The Occultist's Rear ability reads, Spell, put the top card of your discard pile into play as a hero in any empty slot. Defeat this hero. And the Machinist Operation ability reads, Recruit a hero into an empty slot into your unit. It may attack or cast a spell. Heroes and leaders may gain status effects such as boost or lowering attack, or even gaining intercept. The game has provided a variety of tokens to help remind players of these changes. When playing a match with several games, the winner gets to take the rival's fallen leader as a trophy, placing it aside to show how many points they have. In following games, a player draws an extra card at the beginning of their game for each trophy their rival possesses. The player who won the last game will go first in the next game. And that concludes the tutorial for Pixel Tactics. Join me in a later video for a play-by-play -play walkthrough on how the game is played. For more information about this game and other products from Level 99 Games, please visit them at level99games.com. The Garbage Stacker would like to thank Level 99 Games for sending a review copy of Pixel Tactics Deluxe. For more videos like these and many others, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, support us on Patreon, vote for us on board game links, and take a moment to hit that like button, we really appreciate you doing so. And of course, keep on stacking games!